Hi guys, Captain Orion here, and today we're going to be looking at how to maximise your iron mining runs. Now don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy, and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Dreamlight Valley. First, let's talk setup. You're going to want some good food to help you whilst you mine, as you're aiming to always make sure you have a gold energy. Generally, the gold stamina bar will enable you to run slightly quicker, allowing you to make the most out of your iron run. Now, for this, I tend to use blueberries to maximise my blue stamina bar as they are really easy to obtain and then I would tend to cook a lot of souffles to use through my mining trip which restores 2386 energy however you can use whatever cooked food you prefer. It's also worth noting to make sure your inventory is, in, is as empty as possible except for the food obviously to save you time in running backwards and forwards. I would also say that in this method I will not be using a buddy as I found whilst testing that they would often just throw the additional items anywhere and this made it harder and slowed down my iron run as I was just trying to run around and pick them up. Now this tutorial also assumes you are able to place your wells anywhere however I am aware that some people may not be able to move their wells because of the design of their valley and that's absolutely fine. You can use this video as a base and find what works best for you and your valley's layout. Now, this suggested route is going to utilise four areas for mining in Dreamlight Valley and a total of four wells. These four areas will be Forest of Valor, the Glade of Trust, Sunlight Plateau and the Forgotten Lands. Now, whilst Frosted Height does also drop some iron, to make the path most efficient we won't be including it in this iron mining run. It's also worth noting that the rocks you mine take a total of five minutes to respawn. This means that the whole run is designed to last somewhere around five minutes each time. However, bear in mind the amount you get from each rock and random events can cause this to be quicker or slower, but the result should be the same no matter how it ends up. Let's look at area 1, the Forest of Valor. Here we are going to be utilising the Frosted Heights well, putting it as close as we can to the stairs going down here. Make sure you face the bucket on the well in the position you want to come out of, i.e. down the stairs, just to make it easier for you. After that, we're going to follow the path in number sequence on this map, once you hit marker 5, we will then take the Forest of Valor well, again positioning the bucket to where we come out, to get to marker number 6. After that, we're going to use a teleport using Peaceful Meadow well, which we place just on the steps going down into the second area, which is the Glade of Trust. Again, following the route around, the next is optional, but I found it saved a tiny bit of time, and that is after marker 9, you can put the Glades well in front of marker 10, and simply teleport over there. However, this is entirely optional. I just found it saves a tiny bit more time here or there. Once you've reached marker 12, teleport to the well and sunlight plateau. Again, follow the path round as shown. And whilst this route does make you double back on yourself, I found it still works pretty well with the five minute timer. After that, we move into the final area, which is the Forgotten Lands. Now, it's worth noting that the iron drops in the Forgotten Lands is lower. However, this is about maximising our time, and as you had not yet hit the 5 minute timer, I found it useful to include the Forgotten Lands in this video. Once you hit marker 24, or 23 depending on how you feel your run's going, simply use the well in the Frosted Heights to teleport back and start again. As I mentioned earlier, please bear in mind that sometimes depending on the rocks drops along the way, they may not have quite grown back yet, simply wait a couple more seconds and they should regrow again. Now, I would also say that I'm starting in Frosted Heights, but you can start wherever you like along this map. It's just for my purpose. <laughs> now, let's talk about results, which is really why you're here. You want to know how much iron you can get, and is it worth your time? So I tested this method out three separate times, each with a 30 minute time limit, and we averaged a total number of around 453 items per trip. Of this, an average of 150 of these were iron, and that's about 33% of the total items that we have. And if I pause right here, you can also see what the average is for some of the other ores and gemstones, and what you can expect to get. Now, I would just kind of put a small disclaimer that if there's obviously any updates or changes in the game, this could obviously reflect it, and if you're not do it like following the video precisely or you make some changes your drops may differ slightly however that's it for today's video guys please let me know in the comments if you found this useful and if you have any other helpful tricks you think could help anyone else with their valley now make sure to leave a like subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all things dreamlight valley until next time guys i'll see you later